Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Peruvian potato and chicken salad. That's right, I love potato salad and chicken salad and absolutely adore Peruvian cuisine, which is why this amazing dish that my friends in Peru would call causa is one of my all-time favorite things to eat, especially when the weather gets hot. And you might be thinking, making a potato salad with mashed potatoes sounds crazy. Well, it is. Crazy good. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. And the first thing we're going to do is make a chicken salad. And what I have here is one leftover cooked chicken breast that I diced up, even though shredding the meat would have been more traditional. But either way, we're going to need some cooked chicken, usually from leftovers. And then to that, we will add some green peas, either fresh ones we blanched or frozen ones we've thawed. And then we'll also do a little bit of diced carrot, which I've cooked until soft and tender. Okay, I guess you could use raw veggies for this, but I prefer something softer and sweeter. And then we'll also toss in a little bit of finely minced shallot, which could also be a little bit of red onion or green onion. And then if you have some, some diced roasted red pepper would be nice. As would some freshly chopped cilantro. And then for a little bit of acidity, we will add some freshly squeezed lime juice. But just a touch, because there's going to be lime in our potato, we don't want redundant seasoning. So just a hint. And then we'll go ahead and finish up with some salt. And a couple shakes of cayenne. And then last but not least, enough mayonnaise to bind this all together. And then we'll go ahead and take a spoon and give that a mix. And once we have everything combined, feel free to go ahead and taste it. But as you might know, for things like this, we generally don't want to do the final seasoning adjustments until right before we're going to serve it and everything's nice and cold. So we can sample it now, but we're definitely also going to check it later and adjust if we need. So we'll go ahead and wrap that up and pop it in the fridge. And by the way, I usually have a cloth towel under these bowls so they don't move around on the table. But this time I just used a damp paper towel I folded up, which looks really weird in the shot, which is why I'm mentioning. But anyway, once our chicken salad is set and in the fridge, we can move on to the potato component, starring this, a little something called aji amarillo, which I'm going to use in this paste form. And it really is this gorgeous orange chili that gives causa its signature flavor. So hopefully you'll find some, but if you don't, don't worry. I'm going to tell you how to substitute, and it's going to be almost exactly the same. And then what we'll do is peel and quarter some Yukon Gold potatoes and add them to some cold, fresh water with a generous amount of salt. And then what we'll do is place those over medium-high heat and bring them up to a simmer, and we will cook them until very, very tender. All right, not so soft they all start falling apart, but very, very tender so that when we mash them, we don't have a bunch of little undercooked chunks. And once those are done, we'll let those drain very well before transferring them to a mixing bowl, where we will proceed to mash those extremely smooth. And of course, if you want to use a ricer, go ahead. But I find the potato masher works just fine. And by the way, why is it called a ricer and not a potatoer? As Stephen Wright might have asked one time. But anyway, we'll go ahead and mash that until there's no lumps, or as close to lump-free as we can get. At which point, we'll go ahead and spoon in some of our aji amarillo. And how much exactly will be up to you? but I'm thinking we need at least a couple tablespoons. Oh, and not to spoil the blog post, a combination of sweet bell pepper with a red jalapeno would also work. And then besides our chili, we will also add a little bit of olive oil, as well as a whole bunch of freshly squeezed lime juice. And again, all these amounts are gonna be up to you, but as usual, I will tell you what I used. And then we'll finish this up with a little bit of cayenne and more than a little bit of salt. And then we'll go ahead and mash and stir all this together. And as you do, it's going to take on the most glorious gold color you've ever seen, at least in a mashed potato salad. And then once that's been accomplished, I like to switch to a spatula and then work this over for another minute or two until we're sure everything's beautifully smooth and luxurious. And that's it. Other than checking the seasoning, we are ready to start assembling, which I'm going to be doing, as you can see, in some plastic line ramekins, although any size and shape mold will work. And by the way, the recipe I'll give you is probably going to make about four this size, although I only did two for the camera. But anyway, we'll go ahead and start by scooping in some potato. And then we'll use our fingers or a spoon or a spatula to smooth it out and press it down. And then once that's set, if we want, we can now top it with an optional layer of avocado, which not only tastes good and pairs perfectly with the lime and chili, but when you unmold these, it looks really cool as well. And then once our avocado layer is set, we'll go ahead and top that with our chicken salad. And of course, the ratio between potato and chicken salad is going to be up to you. This time I ended up with a little more potato than meat. 
but you go ahead and adjust those proportions any way you want. And as we're adding these layers, we want to make sure we're really pressing it down and sort of pulling up the plastic on the sides to make sure we don't have any gaps or air pockets. And then what we'll do once our chicken salad layer has been completed is finish up with one last layer of potato, which might seem impossible since we've pretty much filled this all the way to the top, but it's not. We're just going to go ahead and pile some on anyway, because it's perfectly fine to go like a half inch even more above the top. All right, this potato is very soft and moldable now. But once it chills, it's going to firm up and hold its shape. And once we flip it over, it's going to look great. So please don't feel like you're overfilling this. Okay, as long as we kind of flatten it out and sort of pull everything together with the plastic, so at least everything's inside the edges of the ramekin, it's going to work beautifully. And that's it. Once stacked and wrapped, these are now ready to transfer into the fridge for at least an hour, I'd say, or until thoroughly chilled, at which point we can go ahead and pull it out. And we will unwrap the top. And then once we've made sure all that plastic's out of the way, we'll go ahead and grab a plate and center it over the top. And then we will carefully but confidently flip it over and remove the ramekin, and then eventually the plastic. And if everything's gone according to plan, you should see some beautifully defined layers. And then if you want, you can serve this as is, and it would be amazing. But if you did want to serve it with some kind of sauce, that would also be very appropriate. Maybe it's a beautiful garlicky aioli that you spike with some of that chili pepper. Or maybe it's a thinned out sour cream with a little bit of lime. All right, you know it works. So I did spoon a little bit of a sauce around mine. And then I finished up with some purple cherry tomato halves and a little sprig of cilantro to warn those people that don't like that that there's some in this. And that's it. My take on Peruvian potato and chicken salad is done. And looking very inviting if I do say so myself. So I grabbed a fork and dug in to this highly unusual but extraordinarily delicious dish. And once you get past that you're eating cold mashed potatoes and you open your mind and really let yourself enjoy what's going on here, you realize just how brilliant this dish is. All right, we have that slightly spicy, bitter sweetness from the peppers playing off that tanginess from the lime, which all perfectly complements our veggie spiked chicken salad. And I really can't think of anything else I'd rather eat on a hot summer day. Oh, and by the way, I went with chicken salad here, but tuna is also a delicious and popular choice. And something like grilled shrimp would also work beautifully. So please feel free to use the same technique with different salads in the center. I mean, you are after all the Aubrey Plaza of your causa. And speaking of parks and recreation, these things would be perfect to make ahead, pack in your cooler, and pull out at that cookout or picnic. And while you may initially confuse some people, eventually they will all be smiling and nodding knowingly and from that point on, you'll be known as the person that convinced people that eating cold mashed potatoes with chicken salad was a good idea. And not just a good idea, but an absolutely great idea. So whether you plan to shock and amaze your friends under the sun this summer, or just your family on some dark weeknight, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.